the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose beloved Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of illness and disease. Continue beseech you his gracious work among us, especially today as we open microbiology laboratory. Bless men, our mission and vision, in order that this ecumenical initiative started in 1986 may continue to provide reliable and affordable health products and technologies. We pray for the President, His Excellency Dr. William Samuel Ruto, give him a true servant spirit and anoint him with the Holy Spirit that he might feel your strength in every situation. Let integrity and honesty guide every decision as we first look for you for divine help. Bless our cabinet secretary, Honorable Susan, and all those who work with her. Bless all directors and trustees of Mint and accompany them with your graces and wisdom. Bless our staff at Mint. May they always work to serve you as they serve your people. Grant us all good health of mind, body, and soul, and direct us always to do your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Bishop. Your Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Madam Susan Nakumicha, all uh, Cabinet Secretaries, Principal Secretaries present, the Partners present, the Chair Meds Board of Trustees, Reverend Charles uh, Asulitwa, uh, Members of Parliament, all local and national leaders. Your Excellency, sir, with your permission, at this point I would like to invite the Chair of the Board, uh, Reverend Charles, to come and make his comments, and then we proceed with the rest of the program. We can clap for him as he's coming. Karibu sana. Board Chair. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoe Ruto, the Honorable Cabinet Secretary for Health, Madam Susan Nahumicha Wafula, Honorable Patrick Macau, Member of Parliament Mavoko Constituency, Representatives of various county governments, Principal Secretary for Medical Services, Mr. Harry Kimtai, Principal Secretary for Public Health and Professional Standards, Ms. Mary Modoni, Heads of Directorate and Institutions Present, Representatives from Development Partners, Members of MEDS Board of Trustees and Directors, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning. At this juncture, I will kindly request the Board of Trustees and Board of Directors just to stand to appreciate your presence. You may resume your seats, please. It's my pleasure and honor to address you during this auspicious occasion that marks an important milestone for mission for essential drugs and supply, supplies meds family. On my behalf and that of the Board of Trustees and Directors, I sincerely thank you for taking time off your busy schedules to join us today. In 1986, the late Reverend Sister Joanne Devan, an American medical missionary and pharmacist, became the driving force behind meds. Greatly moved by the struggles of the church health facilities, she advocated for the Catholic and Protestant churches in Kenya to join hands 
in setting up a joint medical supplies procurement program. Through her efforts, MEDS was set up as an ecumenical trust of the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishop, Bishops, KCCB, and Christian Health Association of Kenya, CHAC. Over the last 37 years, the organization has grown and extended its supply chain tentacles to serve faith-based organizations, counties, and county facilities, local and international non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, and learning institutions, among others. MED's vision is a faith-based organization providing transformative health solutions globally. And our mission is to provide reliable and affordable health products and technologies, quality assurance, and health system strengthening services. The organization has three core mandates. One, supply chain and logistics. Two, quality assurance services. And three, health system strengthening. MEDS is serving the above mentioned diverse clientele from its head office and in our branch at Kisumu City. In 1995, MEDS Quality Control Laboratory was set up with the, the main aim of testing and assuring the quality of the products stocked by MEDS. The quality assurance function through the laboratory has recorded great strides over the years and currently offers testing services to other 19 countries in Africa and beyond. The Quality Control Laboratory is well equipped for testing health products and technologies and was pre-qualified by the World Health Organization in 2009. Through adhering to strict quality assurance mechanism, the laboratory has maintained the World Health Organization pre-qualification status and is one of the eight pre-qualified laboratories, laboratories in Africa. At this juncture, I wish to thank the Ministry of Health for the support to, to and collaboration with MEDS and specifically the regulator, Pharmacy and Poisons Board. These achievements will not have been possible without the close working relationship between MEDS, the Ministry of Health, and respective directorates. I cannot fail to mention that the Honorable Cabinet Secretary for Health, Madam Susan Nahumicha, is a former staff of MEDS and remains. <laughs> and remains close to MEDS family. The board of trustees, directors and staff are indeed grateful and extend a warm welcome home to you, Madam CS. <laughs> Since inception, the quality control laboratory has focused on chemical analysis. However, in line with the strategic direction of MEDS, the organization has invested over Kenya shillings 100 million to set up the microbiology laboratory. This new facility will increase the capacity of the laboratory to carry out our wider range of tests, hence enhance contribution to improving quality of healthy commodities in the country and the region and fighting the menace of counterfeit medicines. The fight, <laughs> the fight against falsified and substandard medicines is a collaborative one between the government and players in the health sector, such as manufacturers, distributors, dispensing units, among others. In recognition of the need for concerted efforts, MEDS remains committed to consistently invest in quality assurance and testing for safe and quality products being consumed by the end users. Ladies and gentlemen, this achievement gives us a sense of immense joy and gratitude, especially when we ponder on the many lives that will be impacted by the additional testing capacity across the pharmaceutical, cosmetic, food and beverage industries. The state-of-the-art facility will increase the range of services offered and contribute towards improving the quality 
of health commodities and other products in the region. In support of the newly launched Universal Health Coverage Program by Your Excellency, on 20th October 2023, MEDS wishes to make contribution to this great initiative that is targeting strengthening of primary health care by making a donation of 150 community health promoters uh, kits to benefit the following five counties. In the spirit of good neighborhoodness, Nairobi, Machakos, Makueni, Kiambu, and Kajiado counties. This is in recognition of the important role that CHPs are playing as the first line of defense in prevention of diseases and health promotion through screening, early identification of diseases, and referral to health facilities for management. MEDS is in a position to replenish CHP kits for use by CHPs at subs subsidized cost. Lastly, I want to once again wish to express our sincere gratitude to Your Excellency for finding time out of your busy schedule to officiate over <laughs> the official opening of MEDS Microbiology Laboratory. We are more than ready, Your Excellency, to benefit from your wise counsel on how to partner with the government as well as improve meds operations. I also take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for choosing to join us today. Our success is a collective effort, and it is because of partners like you that we have achieved so much over the years. I am confident that together we will continue to thrive in the years to come if we remain committed to our respective and collective mandates. We pray for God's Holy Spirit to enlighten us with his wisdom and guidance in all our endeavors. God bless you all. Next, with your permission, Your Excellency, I'd like to invite the Deputy Mission Director USAID to Kenya, but Ubamadu to make some brief remarks. Welcome, sir. Tumbigi Makofi Tafadali. Welcome. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Health, Susan Nakamichi, Principal Secretary, Minister of Health, uh, Mary Matheny and Harry Kimtai, Meds Board Chairman, the Right Reverend Charles Asalutwa, Med Man Managing Director, Dr. Wycliffe Andama, other board members, national and county government officials, and distinguished guests, all protocols observed, and good morning. I am honored to be here with you today at the Mission for Essential Drugs and Supplies for the opening of this important microbiology laboratory. The laboratory that is opening today makes a huge step forward for Kenya and the health of all Kenyan citizens. The COVID pandemic taught us the importance of being able to identify human and animal pathogens. And this lab will be able to do that right here in Nairobi. The United States has a long history of partnership with meds. In the early days of the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, meds was responsible for delivering HIV medications to thousands of patients who were, for the first time, able to receive life-saving support. More recently, MEDS has been warehousing and delivering U.S. government donated health commodities to the people of Kenya since 2021. Under this partnership, MEDS has reached millions of patients through deliveries to more than 8,000 health facilities 
while simultaneously reducing wastage and expired medicines and significantly shortening order turnaround time. The United States spends approximately 100 million US dollars per year on medical commodities for HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, maternal and child health, and family planning, making the US government the largest buyer of medical commodities for Kenya. These commodities have contributed to substantial gains for Kenya has made in life expectancy, HIV treatment coverage, and decreases in malaria. We are proud to work in partnership with you, sir, the rest of the Kenyan government, and organizations like MEDS to realize these tremendous achievements. Kenya is a rapidly growing and dynamic country as evidenced by the lab we are opening today. While this lab will help protect Kenyans against the pathogens and diseases of tomorrow, Kenya must also look to build the kind of health care system that the Kenya of tomorrow will need. Kenya's health care system must adapt to patients' needs and provide services where patients need them. For example, patients are much more likely to take their medicines if that medicine is easily accessible and they don't have to travel long distances to a clinic where they then must wait in line. Such health care systems can only succeed by allowing public, private, and faith-based organizations like MEDS to provide health care services where patients want them under the regulatory auspices of the Kenyan government. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so thrilled to be here today on this historic day as we glimpse the future of Kenya's healthcare system. I hope through continued partnership, we replicate the success for the benefit of Kenyan citizens across this great country. Asante Sana. Thank you. Next, I'll now call upon the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Madam Susan Nakumicha, to make her remarks, and in turn, invite His Excellency the President. We can clap for her as she's coming. Welcome, Madam CS. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, I would like to say, welcome home. <laughs> Let me begin by recognizing the officials that are here from the ministry. I'm here with the principal secretary for public health and professional standards, Madam Mary Modoni. <clears throat> Your Excellency, we are also here with the members from our health committee from the National Assembly. We don't take it for granted that you managed to join us. Other senior officials present, maybe I have not uh, traced you. I can see the chair of KEMSA, CEO KEMSA. <laughs> Any other officials? Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Your Excellency, uh, when I gave you the invite to this place, I know it was short notice, but there's a critical point that I did not tell you about that I worked for this institution close to nine years. I was afraid to tell you, lest you say that I just come and manage my business. <laughs> but I'm happy that today you have uh, made it here. Your Excellency, this institution is a critical cog in delivery of healthcare in this country. We have our institution, which is a KEMSA, dealing with the supply chain, and KEMSA serves close to 60%. MEDS in its own, Your Excellency, serves 20%. So if we put MEDS and KEMSA together, that gives us 80%, which is critical in the 80-20 rule in ensuring that we get our supply chain right for medical products and uh, technologies. Your Excellency, the lab that we are veiling today, it completes the equation. We launched, and you did launch, the community health promoters together with our kit. You again went ahead, and we launched the local manufacturers. But as usual, there are people who are hesitant to use locally manufactured products. 
and the big question is always the quality. Therefore, the lab that we launched today fills the gap of the quality of locally manufactured products in this country. <laughs> we equally have the National Quality Control Laboratory. But as you may be aware, Your Excellency, our public institutions have their own fair of challenges, including efficiency, including governance. You have given me the responsibility to work on it, but the good thing is that we have where to learn from in terms of efficiency. I have just checked the records, Your Excellency, that our National Quality Control Laboratory in the last one year, they looked at about 800 samples. And this morning when I was speaking to Dr. Nandama, he told me they did 2,000 samples. We can only collaborate, we can only complement each other and ensure that we deliver health care in the right way in this country. Your Excellency, I'm also proud that this institution is not just serving Kenya. It is serving Africa and beyond. I think that is something that we really have to be very grateful for. And we are working together very closely. You had directed, and uh, KEMSA is already working on it, that we pull our procurement together. That the it's significant stock that we see here, we put together with KEMSA, we should be able then to achieve a good economies of scale that eventually the last price that ends up to the patient is manageable. And I believe that we are going to continue collaborating together. And equally with the faith-based facilities, Your Excellency, it is now in law, we are forced to work together in the primary care network. <laughs> and I am passionate about the faith-based facilities because I know their markup is close to zero. All they do is ensure that they provide the services. So I'm very happy today, and of course to be happy, Your Excellency. The many good things that you, do, you see me doing are because of the tutelage of the MD, Dr. Wycliffe Nandama. <laughs> he was my immediate supervisor <laughs> the many years I worked here. The bad ones that you see me doing, it's out of my own omission as a human being. <laughs> it's not because of him. But there are many good things that uh, I have learned from this institution, and I will keep doing them. I have many friends that I have even asked to come and assist us to work in a government, and they have declined. But I understand the reason why. Thank you very much, Gladys, for declining the offer. Thank you very much. <laughs> but we will keep working together. Your Excellency, I am really, really happy that you made it to be here. And today, we go into the map that a WHO pre-qualified laboratory has been launched in Kenya. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. <laughs> and with those few remarks, I would like us all to be upstanding and give a mighty, mighty clap to His Excellency the President. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, yesterday, uh, I got a call from Minister Nakumicha, and she was very insistent that this function must go on. I now know why. <laughs> um, I tried to explain to her that I was away, but uh, I, I didn't manage. That's why I am very pleased to join you today for the launch of this state-of-the-art microbiology quality control laboratory here at MEDS, a facility that will serve and advance healthcare in Kenya and in many other countries around our region. But today is bigger than just one facility because our health system, and more importantly, our shared ambition for universal health coverage is interconnected. Universal health care is not one thing. 
It is not one facility. It is a symphony of many elements coming together efficiently and effectively. It is facilities like this and many more, research, training, health workers, social insurance, local manufacturing, and other many components weaved together that will give us universal health coverage. Um, universal health coverage, therefore, is the sum total of all these units. It is their synchronous functionality and total alignment that provides us with the results that will make it possible for us to handle the health requirements of Kenyans. We are therefore here to mark a step forward in the right direction to align our aspirations and actions with what we need for universal health care. A milestone on the journey towards this national dream of universal access to quality health care. The supply of health products and technologies is a key pillar towards the realization of UHC. Medicine is only important if it reaches people. Surgical supplies only makes a difference if they are in a theater room. On October 2023, just last month, I assented to four bills, namely the Primary Health Care Act 2023, the Digital Health Act 2023, the Facility Improvement Financing Act 2023, and the Social Health Insurance Act 2023. These laws provide the legal framework and institutional foundation to accelerate the attainment of UHC. And I want to thank legislators in our country, both in the National Assembly and Senate, for doing their bit to actualize this firm legal and institutional foundation. <laughs> this effort towards universal health coverage is a whole, so, a whole of society engagement. Those of us in the executive, the good people in the legislature, and also the good people in our judiciary. It will take the whole lot of us to work together for us to achieve this very important aspiration for all of us as Kenyans. For 37 years, MEDS has played a leading and significant role in the supply of medical commodities in Kenya and beyond. Since the advent of devolution, MEDS has supplied over 7.5 7 billion shillings worth of medical commodities to counties and government institutions playing a complementary role to KEMSA. I encourage the two organizations to strengthen their partnership to exploit opportunities that will benefit Kenyans in especially the health space. The coming together, the partnership and collaboration will not only benefit the institutions, but it will also benefit our health provision ecosystem in its totality. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda envisions consolidation of our medical commodity needs to leverage economies of scale and the bulk purchase of medical supplies. Together, KEMSA and MEDS meet over 80% of the medical supplies needs across the country. Over the past few months, I have presided over the opening of several pharmaceutical manufacturing plants in Kenya. I am glad to note that MEDS sources over 81% of their supplies locally. 
and, and I want to congratulate Meds because I have given the same instructions to KEMSA that going forward, local manufacturers take precedence over imports. <laughs> With 36% of that being directly from local manufacturers. Local manufacturing is essential to UHC. Lowering the cost of drugs and medical supplies will make the system sustainable, it will make it affordable, and it will make it work for everybody. I want to extend an invite to investors to exploit this space and develop manufacturing plants in Kenya from where they can sell locally and also across our region. As I, as I told manufacturers that we are not only going to use affirmative action to make sure that we buy locally manufactured pharmaceutical commodities, products, and technologies, but as government, we are also going to provide an ecosystem and a fiscal uh, incentives to support companies that want to manufacture from Kenya. Um, last week, we gazetted another special economic zone in Thika. And out of the 500 acres of that special economic zone, 100 acres is going to be dedicated to companies that want to manufacture pharmaceutical products and commodities in Kenya. We will shortly be rolling out the infrastructure, roads, water, electricity in that facility. And therefore, my offer to companies who want to manufacture in Kenya is going to be concrete and real in the next couple of months. Listening to the representative of USAID, he made a very profound statement on what we saw during the COVID pandemic, that it is possible for medical products to be nationalized, and it is possible for countries to hold and to refuse to sell their commodities to others. And therefore, having local manufacturing capacity is an insurance for us of supply, even when we have difficult times globally. <laughs> Through partnerships, MEDS, an indigenous organization, has served several regional countries and responded to various humanitarian crises within the region and globally. MEDS has delivered medical supplies to Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, South Sudan, Somalia, Chad, Malawi, DRC, Cameroon, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, Libya, Philippines, Haiti, Afghanistan, and Syria. I am happy to note that MEDS has the capability to replenish the service delivery kits of community health uh, workers and promoters supporting the continuous provision of preventive Healthcare, And I want to thank Chair for the offer you have made for our community health promoters. The 150 kits you have offered today will add on to the 100,000 we have already given to all our community uh, health promoters around Kenya. We know there are still some gaps and your offer is very much welcome. I was listening very carefully, uh, uh, Bishop, and you said that you will work with us to replenish um, the commodities and uh, the products that are currently available and being used by our community health promoters. And I, I underline the word you said that you will provide them affordably. That is very important. <laughs> uh, 
and, and so we will hold you to your word. And we <laughs> <laughs> Through the Facility Improvement Finance Act 2023, the government has committed to improving the infrastructure of health facilities in the country. I am glad that MEDS has a well-established health system strengthening unit and a medical equipment supplies unit that I just saw this morning that will support this objective. Through this capacity building arm, MEDS has trained over 40,000 health workers and I hereby challenge our institutions of higher learning, universities and TVETs to pursue industry-focused training solutions to bridge the existing knowledge gaps. I, I would really encourage um, our universities that are training our medical personnel and even our TVETs to engage in industry training. We will shortly be rolling out a policy on how they can beneficiate and they can commercialize uh, that activity. The government will work with the private sector to actualize universal health. We will review the tax regime and cost of doing business in the pharmaceutical sector to make Kenya a regional pharmaceutical manufacturing hub. <laughs> and as I said, Apart from what we will be doing in our special economic zones, apart from ensuring that we prioritize local manufactured uh, commodities in our purchase, we will also continuously uh, work with R&Ds to make sure that we not only supply our medical uh, commodities to Kenya, but we also have a hub around here so that we can supply to the rest of the globe Looking at what KEMSA has managed to do, about 19 countries, it gives us very clear hope that it is possible to go beyond our borders. Let me also confirm what uh, the spiritual leaders asked me earlier about the participation of the church and religious organizations in the new network that we are rolling out for making sure that our health delivery is truly bottom up, starts from the village, and our primary care networks, beginning with uh, uh, dispensaries, health centers, graduating into uh, sub-county uh, hospitals, and on, become and a, a relationship and a partnership between government, the private sector, religious organizations, non-governmental organizations, civil society, because we want a whole of society approach in the management of this very important sector. And that is why it is now in law that people running health facilities that are managed by missions and, and, and managed by uh, ch uh, churches will be part and will participate in the governance of our primary care networks. <laughs> we were deliberate about this because we see that there is a lot of value to be derived by mission hospitals and hospitals run by the private sector participating in the governance of the space around our health because we truly want to make it universal. <laughs> Minister Nakumicha will tell you beginning um, this week we will actually be having a conversation on regulations that are going to inform what kind of charges people pay on health insurance. We want a robust conversation. The um, religious leaders who met me earlier said they want to be part of that conversation, and I want to tell you, you're welcome to be part of that conversation. 
that conversation must determine how much somebody like the president pays and how much Mama Mboga pays. And my suggestion is that payment of, uni of, uh, of health insurance should be commensurate to people's income so that those who cannot afford pay less and those who cannot afford, we can then finance them as government. Because I did make a commitment that health is not a luxury. Health is not something that anybody should miss because of their financial status. The indigents, the people who cannot pay, will be paid for by the government of Kenya. Those who can pay, depending on their ability, should pay depending on their ability. And those of us who can pay more should know that we are paying more so that we can carry those who are not as endowed as we are. But that is not a conversation for me to decide. That is a conversation for Kenyans to decide. And I want to welcome all of us as, uh, as, as stakeholders, as, as people who will benefit from this. And in any case, the Constitution demands of us that any action we take, we must bring the public on board. It is a constitutionally, constitutional imperative that public participation be part and parcel of all our processes. So again, good luck with uh, that conversation. And it is uh, my intention that uh, before 1st of uh, January, we must have settled that conversation so that we can effectively make sure that all Kenyans have access to universal health. Um, Reverend uh, Asilutua Bishop of uh, Maseno North did mention that uh, you want to benefit from my advice, and, and I don't want to leave here before at least I say something about it, <laughs> so that whatever Bishop says doesn't go to waste. Um, the same thing we are doing with KEMSA, we have made it absolutely clear that the era of wastage and uh, pilferage and uh, theft and corruption must be firmly behind us. And we want to leverage on technology. We are willing as government to support meds in the rollout of technology, if, if you need our support around technology to make sure that you manage your ecosystem from supply from one end all the way to delivery on the other end, we are currently working with KEMSA to make sure that technology becomes part of the equation and becomes an enabler of the delivery of service. And that is the reason why members of parliament passed the digital health bill so that it becomes part of the legislation that will underwrite and form the foundation for us to deliver health using technology and using digitization to eliminate what has bedeviled NHI for a long time, fake claims, crooked people who take advantage of that space we believe that technology is going to give us the levers to be able to deal with fake claims, to deal with pilgrimage, and to make sure that Kenyans get value for every pain, every coin, and every penny that they contribute. So we are ready to work with you around the space, around technology. That's number one. Number two. Leveraging on the economies of scale, again, uh, we want to work with you to see how uh, commodities, we can reduce the price by um, sourcing commodities together and using the economies of scale to do that. And also, 
that we can also work together towards promoting local manufacturers by making sure that we give them a uh, priority. I'm sure we can talk a little bit more about other, e other interventions as we go into the future, but your ideas, your suggestions are very welcome as we continuously improve this space around delivery of health. I congratulate MEDS for this great achievement once again and reiterate that the journey towards universal health coverage is a relay that involves almost every entity in the health sector. We are all connected, and if we work together, nothing can stop us from success. And I'm very clear about that. Asante Nisana, God bless you, and you've done a wonderful job. Asante Nisana. Thank you, Your Excellency. One more round of applause for His Excellency. Your Excellency, with your permission, Meds had prepared a gift for you, and at this point, I'll invite the chair, Right Reverend Charles Asilutwa, to present the gift before we do two photo opportunities. Kindly, let's have the gift come. Reverend, if you may come. Your Excellency, with your permission, uh, maybe if you may just come to receive the gift before we have two photos taken, then we wrap it up. So...